Okay, um, in this video lecture, I'm going to be discussing chapter 14. This is the last chapter of the semester for Psychology of Women. Woohoo! And uh, this chapter talks about how the women's movement has evolved over time and how diverse it has become. Um, and this diversity is important because if the mo movement is going to succeed in its goal of equal rights for all women, um, because different, this, is, this diversity is key because different groups of women have different needs that have to be addressed. Um, there's diversity in terms of ethnicity, social class, nationality, sexual orientation, etc., etc. So women from all these groups have to work for social change so that the benefits are shared by all. For example, like in the workplace, younger women may be feeling the impact of the wage gap um, while older women maybe are fighting against the double standard of aging. So um, they have different needs that need to be addressed. So diversity on many f fronts and on many factors um, is very important. Um, so in that instance, we'd be looking at diversity of age. Um, so anyway, it's all, all the diverse factors are important to, con to continue to, for the women's movement to con continue to be successful for all women. So in terms of an outline for the chapter, um, this chapter talks about uh, contemporary feminism, um, also sort of uh, the images of feminism and attitudes towards it, and then looking at um, feminist psychology and social change. Okay, just a quick reminder of um, the waves of feminism. A first wave, remember, started way back uh, when suffragists were um, fighting for the right, right for women to vote, um, and that was in the early 1900s. The second wave of feminism um, really began in the um, 1960s um, and worked on issues such as reproductive rights, workplace equality, uh, sexism in the media, um, non-sexist child raising, and women, integrating women uh, into the uh, science fields and the field of politics, and also addressing um, the need to the end of violence against women, like um, uh, uh, battering, okay? So then the third wave of feminism um, really started um, really in the 90s, uh, looking at a lot of these same inequities that the second wave of feminism um, started with, but from a, with a more contemporary view um, and that continues to this day um, with the Me Too movement and uh, a lot of different other initiatives um, that uh, feminists have, have brought forth. Um, the continued objectification of women, um, the continued struggle for um, uh, the right to abortion, um, and then of course the horrible uh, trafficking, human trafficking of women and girls. Um, LGBTQ rights, and there's other issues as well. Um, but those are some of the contemporary issues that the women's movement is um, uh, fighting for. So like we've said, feminists are a diverse group on lots of dimensions. Um, but the cornerstone of feminist philosophy and activism is respect for those differences, right? Um, those differences are important. Um, Overall, though, a feminist is one who believes in the worth and the value of women, right? And also believes in collective action. Um, and this belief differentiates feminism as a movement from just individual women achieving success and equality. Um, it's, it's a collective movement. It's, uh, there's a belief in collective, the power of collective action. Well, what the heck is collective action? What do I mean by that? Well, collective action is when there's group solidarity towards social change, right? So this is uh, working people working together uh, to achieve success, right? Um, feminists recognize that this social change is necessary and that no one can do it by themselves, that we have to do that. This, this movement takes uh, people working together as a group. Um, so... Um, this is also a global social movement, okay? It's not just an American movement. It's, it's based um, on the work of women all over the world. Um, one example would be Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, um, who we watched some of her TED Talks, and um, 
she is actually Nigerian, or actually I think she lives in the States now, but she was born in Nigeria and raised there. Um, but she's just a great example of um, the recognition worldwide that women have to come together um, and work as, um, as a uh, movement to change um, social beliefs about women. So what images do we see in today's world or have we seen uh, in the past um, that pertain specifically to feminists and, their, and stereotyping of feminists? Um, well, uh, as recently as like uh, shortly after 9-11, um, there was political conservative commentators who were saying that... Um, uh, feminists, and this is a current common um, refrain of these political conservative commentators, that feminists are uh, basically just um, interested in male bashing um, because they characterize any, any criticism that feminists make of the status quo as male bashing. Um, the truth, uh, though, is that feminism is not about male bashing or making war on men. Um, it is about working on change uh, at the social, the structural, interactional, and in the individual levels of the gender system so that disadvantaged uh, girls and women, that doesn't continue to exist. Those disadvantages go away. It's about changing the system so that women don't end up in poverty in their old age after a lifetime of working but only making 60% uh, of what men make for the same work, for one example, Okay. So in, feminists are labeled as brassy, sharp-tongued man tamers, and that was that comes from way back uh, when women were working for the right to vote in the nineteen uh, hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Um, today, there's uh, some positive aspects uh, that are uh, that are viewed um, stereotypically of feminists. Like, for instance, they're viewed positively as women working together to achieve goals. But again, um, often they are viewed negatively um, as people who complain and have a chip on their shoulder and enjoy male bashing. Um, and research has shown even when people do not hold negative beliefs themselves about feminists, they think that other people do. So there's still some negative stereotypes out there. Um, reoccurring in these stereotypes is this whole idea that um, f women who are feminists are man-haters. But the funny thing is, um, in, a, in a recent study that was done of nearly 500 college students, it was found that feminists had, a significantly, had significantly less hostility towards men than non-feminists, right? So um, this really goes against what you hear these conservative commentators, the labels they like to use, like feminazis and militant feminists. Um, so it's just not, not true. So if we think about attitudes towards feminism, in the past, sometimes being labeled a feminist brought a certain stigma with it, right? Um, we see this in research. Um, as recently as 2001, studies showed many women were reluctant to label themselves feminists uh, because there, had, there was some negative stereotypes out there about what a feminist was. Um, and this was, even though these women believed in feminist ideals, they still hesitate to Many women still were hesitant to label themselves feminists. Um, well, I think a lot of that has changed, um, and you see this reflected in popular culture and in politics. The election of Donald Trump uh, as president uh, galvanized the women's movement in particular. We had two and a half million people around the world participate in the 2017 Women's March protesting his election and his treatment of women. Okay. Um, these days, many women now identify as feminists and support collective action for social change on behalf of women. Um, and this, the research also shows this, that feminist identity is linked to feminist activism. So women who label themselves as feminists are more likely to engage in activism on behalf of women than are women who have similar beliefs about gender equality but who do not label themselves as feminists. Okay. Research has also shown that feminists are more likely than non-feminists to see through and reject unrealistic ideals for women 
and have better psychological well-being than, non, than non-feminists. Um, the main point, though, that we want to take away is that attitudes towards feminism have changed and evolved as the focus on the rights of women has become mainstream. So it's easy to see the impact uh, of feminism on the field of psychology. Um, Only a few decades ago, uh, women psychologists weren't taken seriously as scientists, and they weren't hired by high-status universities, um, which was a reflection in general about how women were treated in workplaces. Uh, But today, you know, I don't know how long ago you would want to put that, but maybe that was... um, as long as 50 years ago, maybe, maybe all the way back to 1970, you saw this, that women psychologists weren't taken seriously as scientists. Uh, but these days, women actually earn the majority of higher degrees in psychology, and they are very well established in the profession. Um, they lead a lot of the professional organizations. They produce uh, lots of books and journals and participate in every aspect of psychological research, education, and practice today. Um, So really, uh, women are very much equal to men in the field of psychology. So, you know, it's, it's... good the strides that uh, our world has made in terms of um, gender equality, Um, but it would be awesome if we could actually get there on a lot of fronts, not just in some occupations, right? Um, So if we were to actually imagine a world with equality, with gender equality, uh, this is where we'd have a world that was free of gender-based violence against girls and women. We wouldn't have human trafficking. We'd have a world where... um, uh, men and women, uh, husbands and wives, girlfriends and boyfriends, uh, everyone, every partner uh, has an equal share of the housework and the child rearing. Um, We we would have children, uh, girls free, protected from sexual abuse, uh, uh, every child protected from sexual sexual abuse. We wouldn't have a a lot of old women uh, being forced to end their lives in poverty. Um, half of the leadership roles in the world would be, uh, led, would be shared by women, um, so that, um, uh, half the CEOs, judges, generals, members of parliament or Congress are women or women in every country. Um, so there's lots of contributions, uh, by women psychologists, uh, and by other, uh, women leaders in psychology, um, Among those, uh, uh, women psychologists uh, have shared in naming the andro labeling and and pointing out the androcentrism and sexism, uh, and often this was done uh, using psychological research and theory development, and um, a lot of the focus on uh, feminism has aided in the development of new research topics and theories, okay? So what can you as students do? Well, there's lots, right? So what can we all do as feminists? What can one student do? Well, you can make a difference as a student by contributing to research and by using your knowledge of psychology, um, what you've learned in this class about the psychology of women and gender, to work for change, right? Um, You can become an activist. You can participate in in activism in, in your community, right? Um, while you're still in school, you could write papers on women or gender issues in your psychology, history, or literature classes. Really, any class where you have a choice of a topic, you could pick um, a woman's issue, a women's issue. Um, if you notice in um, readings or in lecture uh, for a course that there's um, that women are being excluded or tri- trivialized or left out, you could address that to your professor in the class. Um, you can always join organizations for women's equality, such as um, NOW, the National Organization for Women, or the Feminist Majority Foundation. I'm not as familiar with that one, but that's another one. Um, you can always do internships or volunteer work, uh, rape crisis centers, or uh, domestic violence shelters. 
Um, uh, you can help out elderly people, elderly women, or maybe there's a single mom you know who needs assistance. So those are things that you can do to um, to to focus on and advance uh, uh, women's rights. I know several of you are thinking of going to graduate school. Um, so, you know, in graduate school, you can use your, what you've learned in this class, your knowledge about psychology of women and gender can help you in terms of your career planning, right? Um, and you can look carefully at the number of women faculty in any master's or PhD program you consider um, and look at how, how many have tenured, how well the women have done there to help uh, inform you about the university's um, equality of women. Um, also, when you're working, if you're seeking employment after graduation, you can look at gender-related policies and family sensitivity of companies that you consider um, when you're looking at employers. But one of the most important things you can do is to continue to educate yourself on issues facing girls and women, right? Stay aware of them and, and continue to educate yourself so that you, you can make a difference, right? Okay, I've enjoyed um, working with all of you as students. It was great having you as students in my class, and I really do wish you the best.